Flying a drone in New Zealand, uh, most people, if you particularly spend any time on any Facebook groups uh, around droning, a lot of people will say, you just can't do it. There's signs everywhere telling you you can't do it, you're not allowed to, all that sort of stuff. That's not true. There is, uh, there's a lot of places you can fly a drone in New Zealand, but there's a little bit of a process, so I'm just gonna outline that. First things first, I'm, this is not a sheriff's thing where I'm gonna tell you everything you have to do. This is, these are all your choices. You can do what you can choose, whatever you wanna do. Um, I'm just outlining the process that I went through um, to be able to get permission to fly. And so I could do it sort of, you know, feeling secure that uh, yeah, I was allowed to. In April, my wife and I went to New Zealand and we took this little sucker with us. And so some of the prep that I did beforehand was obviously reading a lot about online about what you can and can't do. And the general premise is that there are two two sort of groups of what you can and can't do. One is um, flying over private property uh, allowed as long as you have permission with the owner. They've got a couple of forms that you can print off a whole bunch of them and take them with you if you want. Just get the owner and sign it. Um, it's pretty straightforward. And then the second one is then flying in or around, uh, particularly taking off and so on, uh, in conservation areas uh, and which is covered by DOC, the Department of Conservation in New Zealand. Now, basically what you do is you can ask for permission from DOC to be able to fly in particular areas. Now, that was the only hard bit. That was the bit that I found a little bit time consuming was figuring out exactly where we were going to fly. We had a, we were spending a week there, but yeah, we're going, we sort of ha had a rough idea of what we were gonna do, but we didn't know exactly where and what days were gonna be. So that was probably the only tough bit. Um, but that doesn't really matter because you're just saying, here's a bunch of spots that I potentially will fly. And these, this is the date range that I will fly in those. Uh, and then basically, they send you a big form and you've got a whole bunch of forms for each region and then you're just ticking the box on the one that you want to access. Now, the form is massive, there's heaps of places and a lot of them are just like little reserves in you know, suburbia. So that's you've got to sift through all of that to find the ones that are sort of more touristy places. Dog was about to wee somewhere. Don't blow pugs, they're terrible. <laughs> So that was a really time consuming bit was figuring out exactly what areas we're actually talking about. Like when I looked on Google Maps to say, okay, that's an area that I wanna stay at and camp at and therefore fly at. To then correspond that with the form was sometimes a little bit difficult. I'll include all the links in the bottom, but what I had to do was basically, there is a separate page that has a map um, of where you can look up each of these places. Uh, and look up the name that then corresponds with the form. So basically what I was doing was going through the form on the PDF, copy, paste, search for is that spot the spot that I'm after? No, it's not, keep going. So that was the time consuming bit was figuring out what the places actually meant because the names weren't always represented by what was on Google Maps. So anyway, uh, there is a fee. You pay per region. I think I ended up paying about a hundred bucks. Then you send the form off. It takes about a week. I think they allow 10 working days or something like that. Um, but it came back pretty quick. Uh, they sent an email back within a couple of days saying, yep, you're, you're free to fly in these areas, but we didn't give you permission in this area, for example. Um, so one of the places that I asked permission for, I think it was um, Blue Pools or whatever it is, they didn't give me permission for, so I couldn't fly there. Anyway. Uh, but the process is really straightforward, it's really easy um, and then basically from that point you know where you can fly, you know where you can't fly and some of them are really obvious, you can't fly over Queenstown because, not because it's a populated area but because it's final approach to the airport so, um, so most of it's pretty obvious. Most of the rules are the same or very very similar to what's in Australia as well so yeah, you know, the 120 metre cap and all that sort of stuff. That That's all pretty straightforward. Yeah, you know, four kilometres from an airport, etc. So to answer the question, can you fly a drone in New Zealand? Can you take your drone with you overseas uh, to New Zealand if you're flying into New Zealand? Yes, uh, you can, and I did. There is just a couple of rules, obviously, that you need to know. Uh, and then it's up to you what you do with those rules. Just one thing to remember though, you do need to take the drone and the batteries with you on the plane, not checked in underneath the plane. You don't check the, put it in your checked in baggage, you take it on your carry on baggage. Um, reason being that if something happens to the battery, then they can do something about it. If it's in checked in luggage, then if the battery catches fire, no one knows about it until it's bad. That's it. 
I hope that was helpful. I will include a whole bunch of links uh, in the description that will help you find uh, you know, where you need to get these permissions from. And, and there's, a, there's a lot of pages that show you a lot more detail. So I'll uh, link to those. Anyway, see you next time.